Hey y'all and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian and Tucker has a near aneurysm trying to understand the nonsense coming out of his guest's mouth. You can decide whether or not you want to be a boy or girl or non-binary. Yeah, but you can't actually decide and I'm for choice and there are a lot of biological realities that I'm sad about that I would change about my, no, I'm sincere, that I would change about myself and so I'm not attacking anybody but don't right. you think that biological reality matters and lying to kids and telling them, you know, actually you could be six, seven or you could have blue eyes instead of brown or whatever. I mean, those are lies and it's never a good idea to lie to kids, is it? I don't think it's a lie. I think it's actually giving children more information at a younger age than we traditionally have. Right, so it's like, it's, I'm going to give a comparison. It's like raising a child to not assume that they're heterosexual. Right, the way I've raised my children is to say, like, I don't know what they're going to be, and I'm not just going to assume that they're gay or they're straight. I just give them lots of information and expose a, but, them to lots of people. But there's a different, there's a difference here because whereas you know we don't know a lot about the biology of homosexuality, we know a lot about the biology of sex because we know that it begins in the chromosomal level. Like, there's a science piece to this that's being ignored by people who I thought believed in science. So that's why I'm a little bit confused. I don't think it's being ignored. I think what we're seeing, though, in, in the federal study and in, in what's come out in terms of the Census Bureau is that if 1.4 million people don't identify with the gender marker that they were given at birth, we have to take note of that and say what's going on, that there's a fluidity about gender and it's not necessarily rooted in biology. Let me get this straight. Because you actually make a little bit of sense here and then you stumble back off into the weeds, which is, of course, what most psychologists actually do. So you're admitting that 1.4 million people do have a sort of mental health problem. So it does need to be tackled from that angle. But in that case, it needs to be dissuaded and treated, not given more life. It, it doesn't need to be fed into them. It means it's an unhealthy thing and you're helping the delusion. At least that's the logical uh, conclusion that you would come to, which of course she naturally won't ever admit. Why does that not extend to race? <sighs> Tell me what you mean by that. You're gonna have to explain that one If I can say thing. I'm a woman, why can't I say I'm a Chinese woman and be taken every bit as seriously? And I'm not, I'm not mocking you. I'm making a sincere point and it's a sincere question. What's the difference? You know, I think it's, I, it's a great question. I mean, I think as we progress as a society, some of these labels that we're putting on things, and I, and I can't necessarily um, go to the race question, although one of the things that I've loved about your program as of late is that you're really into this idea of having a more inclusive society and being less separatist in terms of race, that we should be more inclusive. And I think that that's what we're saying. We're creating a space yeah. at the table for people to be, um, to, to have optionality in terms of how they want to identify themselves. Okay. Well, as long as, as long as we're still science-based, then, you know, as a childly it's enlightenment. It's not taking I'm science for... off the table. It's just saying, can <laughs> we look at it from not. another perspective? Okay. That was a whole lot of talk that said a whole lot of nothing. Man, what, what a word salad. And get this, she's trying to backtrack because she doesn't want to make any incendiary statements, which means that this woman actually does seem to care about the topic. And I, I do enjoy it when people who are this woke, who are, are this uh, mentally handicapped, I do enjoy it when they try to be sincere because they legitimately want to help these people. I think this woman actually wants to help and be part of the solution. The problem is she's feeding into delusion and the logical, logical trains of thought that she uses don't end up at the station. They end up getting derailed or thrown off the tracks. And so it astounds me. It's understandable this happens when you're uh, upper class. This is, a, this is essentially a rich white liberal. These are the people who basically run American society. And when you have no real, you know, blinders, no real restraints, you'll say anything and think it's true because the entire world is catered to you. These are the people who literally run America, folks. These are the ones that run our media. These are the ones that run our schools. And there is no accountability for this. It is absolutely insane. And it's absolutely draining us as a nation. Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed this segment here on Politibrawl. Don't forget to like and subscribe or tell me where I got it wrong. But folks, until next time, y'all have a good one.